Hi everyone, this is Misty. This is Lexi. And this is the Flirting with Travel podcast. On today's episode, we're going over traveling solo. Solo. And we'll be touching on some of the tips that you have when traveling by yourself and how it makes it better. Hope you enjoy. Okay, just got out the pen. I'm ready for this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so <laughs> you like traveling solo. <laughs> I do enjoy traveling solo. <laughs> One might even call it my favorite. <laughs> like more than 50 50. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's about. <laughs> All right, we're moving on. Okay. So, what do you feel are the benefits of traveling solo? Okay, so first of all, the best thing is that you set your itinerary and you set your pace. Okay. Like, there's nothing like being on the other side of the world and you are dog tired and thinking, okay, well, I still need to get up at eight because that's what my itinerary says. Uh If it's just me, I don't have to worry that anyone else is going to feel let down. So if I want to sleep till nine, I can sleep till nine. Or if I want to wake up with the sun, which I very often do, I can wake up with the sun and get my day started. That is the benefit of only having to worry about you and not Mm -hmm. others. It makes a difference. Because I think about like Amsterdam when we went together. Mm -hmm. I was waking up every morning. Literally, sun's up, I'm up. I was like, is that that the crack of dawn? Get me out of bed. Get me out of this room. And right. I was, I mean, for the record, I was up at six as well. I I woke up because I knew she was up, but. Yeah, but I, no, there would be at least 30 minutes where I'd flop over. I'm like, Misty, still sleep. Okay. We're just going to lay here. In the darkness. <laughs> I mean, do you see your darkness because it was so dark? I mean, I was awake, and so I was, like, ready to get out there. What Even is it to do when it's still dark, though? No, you just go out and you start wandering. You just start walking. Okay, so solo travel, mm-hmm. and this is actually a, a caveat. Wandering, to me, is the best travel ever. It is. Yeah. So I think when you're traveling by yourself, mm-hmm. you're cutting out all of the... Uh, personable time and so you literally just have time to be yourself and to do your own thing right which means that like I move really fast Mm -hmm. I like to believe I'm somewhat like a shark in the water I'm like vroom 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 right I can get everything done but because I'm moving so fast from here to there then I can say stop now we're gonna sit down at this cafe for 30 minutes and chill so why not an eagle in the air seeing that you are a Gemini as opposed to a shark in the water. You know what? That's a good point. I hadn't thought about being an eagle in the air, but I'll look into it. I'm yeah. going to really have to study some eagles. Right, because they both are like, yeah. True. And you know what? Eagles probably more apropos because sharks are always on the move, and sometimes I do just want to like lay in bed for 12 hours straight. So like when I was backpacking through mm-hmm. um, Vietnam, after Vietnam, I was exhausted. Mm-hmm. I was so tired. And when I got to Cambodia, I think I had one day where I thought, I'm going to get up and do stuff. I realized, no. I don't have to. I don't have to do shit today. But that is the benefit of Mm. solo travel because when you have like different paces, Mm. some different people travel differently. Yeah. And for you, you're a high paced person. I am. I want to, I want to see things and do things because there's nothing like going to a new place Mm -hmm. and thinking, did I miss something? Mm -hmm. Because nothing would kill me like coming back and having someone ask like, oh, did you see this? Did you do this? And we Oh no, I did. Is that a um is that like a mopo thing? What is it? Mo- mofo. mofo. Uh fear of miss FOMO. Fear of miss FOMO. Out. I was I was in the general. Yeah, mofo is FOMO. FOMO. So yeah. is it what fear of missing out. out. Yeah. So no, I do have serious FOMO. Like that's why I have hard times leaving parties, even though I don't like people and I don't like parties. I'm like, <laughs> something amazing is gonna happen the moment I walk leave, out of this room. Right? So I better stay and see it. And then nothing happens. I'm like, well shit, I could have been in bed hours ago right so okay so we can say that FOMO is one of the things no it's super intense because you so for me especially with the 30 by 30 Mm -hmm. I knew that I was going somewhere like one time and I wouldn't have that opportunity for the next couple of years so if I didn't see it it felt like I there was like an an urgency to it. Like, if I don't see it now, I'm never going to see it. Right. Or I can't see it for the next six years, depending. Yeah. But I don't know. There's something about how my mind worked that it wasn't like, oh, it's just a matter of time until I see it again. It was like, you're never going to see this again. What if you never do? Or what if you never want to come back here? Mm -hmm. Because there's so many other places to go. So in your 30 by 30, Mm -hmm. with that being said, would you have preferred to do all of it alone? Or would you have preferred to have people there with you 
Do you think it changes how it is? Because you had such a high pace that you needed yeah. to accomplish that you um, had to, you know, like you, mm-hmm. you had a lot to get through. So, cause it was basically in five years you had to get through like 20 countries. A lot. Yeah. No, I, I really do enjoy traveling alone. It's, it's a sense of freedom, but there is something about the shared experience. So, like, I like traveling alone because mm-hmm. you get to see it through my eyes. Like, mm-hmm. I just get to be there and, oh, it's so hard to explain, like, what traveling alone is like. Mm-hmm. Because people think it's lonely or it's scary. And it's funny when people are like, is it lonely? And I was like, I've only ever gotten lonely once while traveling alone, and that's in Vietnam. But traveling with others brings, like, a lot of stress, too. Mm-hmm that traveling alone doesn't because it's all on you, but I don't mind the responsibility. So you know how like you have to shoulder burdens when you're by yourself, you're fun and you're not having fun. It all comes down to you. You're getting to do stuff and not getting to do stuff. It's all on your shoulders. So it's that could be perceived negatively or it could be perceived positively. It could. So I would, I would say it depends on the person whose hand it's in. Because yeah. I've met a lot of people that would never enjoy traveling alone because the idea of all of the fun that you have is your responsibility mm-hmm. is not something that they would ever want. Whereas for me, I like knowing that I'm in control of what I'm in control of. Because when you're traveling with others, it's you don't have full control. Right. And, I mean, I'm a control freak in my very nature, in my core. <laughs> And I just want to do what I want to do when I want to do it, how I want to do it. And when people oppose that, I'm like, it's a real fucking problem over here. Uh, So I will say that I've only ever done um, one solo trip. Mm -hmm. That was to Bali. Uh, I thought you went to Mexico solo. When did I go to Mexico solo? Oh, maybe. I don't know. No, I know. Bali. So... Oh, she she posted pictures like she was in Mexico solo, but apparently she snuck someone there with her. But that's okay, Bali. Let's talk about it. <laughs> I just you don't always have to post who you're with. So this is the other thing you always don't have to post who you go with. Jesus, someone Moving said that to me the other day. They're like, we feel like you're sneaking on these trips with people, and you're just not posting them. I was like, no, I'm really on my own. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I went to Bali alone. Mm-hmm. I did it as a spiritual trip. Mm -hmm. Um, love, eat, pray, right? And uh, never read the book. I just heard the concept. I didn't even. I didn't even watch the movie. You read the book or you watched the movie? I mean both. Wow. I I mean, what? So did you feel like the movie and the book actually matched? I was able to kind of separate them only because I had watched the movie first, but I'd watched it like way before. Uh So then once I read the book, it felt totally different. Ah, okay. So I did. Um. I did Bali mm-hmm. as a love, eat, pray, but conceptually it was like, it was supposed to be a spiritual journey, right? Mm-hmm. Finding who you are. And yeah. I did Ubud. I did not go to any of the other mm-hmm. places. I, I was actually supposed to do Ubud and Simanyak. And then they said Kuta was supposed to be like the party city. Which, and yeah. to be honest, like I was like, that's not where I'm going. Well, if you're on like a spiritual journey, then that's not where you need to be. Exactly. So I stopped in Ubud. I did a one bedroom um, villa that had its mm-hmm. own pool. It had its outdoor bathroom. Fancy, huh? It was really nice, and it was so affordable. I think for the ten days I was there, I only spent I, the whole trip. I think I spent a thousand dollars. So that's a oh, hundred dollars nice. a day, including lodging, mm-hmm. not including the airfare. But that's another episode. But um, because I I use my points off my Chase Sapphire card, so it's travel hacking to make the most of it. <laughs> But no, I, I really felt that in that trip, it was like, I was at my own pace. I could mm-hmm. do everything I wanted to do. And it's nice, right? When I wanted to do it, as I wanted to do it. And when I was tired, I went to go to sleep. Mm-hmm. And when I wanted to sit and eat, I did. And I got to people watch. And it's like, when I came back from that trip, I felt really rejuvenated. Yes. Right. So you're hitting the reset button for yourself. Exactly. Because it's like... It's taking you away from everything. It's Mm -hmm. taking you away from every other stress that you have in your life. Because work doesn't exist suddenly. Even like the people around you don't exist. And that's, sometimes that's good, sometimes it's bad. Right. Because 
Like, I've been on trips where I'm like, oh, I'm just, I'm so alone, and this could be fun to share with someone. Right. But then I've been on other trips, and I'm like, I'm so alone, and that's everything I needed because I'm eating when I want to eat. And mm-hmm. there will be times when I've, like, I've woken up at 5 a.m. I'm out of the hotel room at 6 a.m. Right. I'm doing crazy stuff. I'm just running around from here to there. Mm-hmm. And then at 3 p.m., I think, there's nothing stopping me from going back to the hotel and taking a nap. I want to say the benefit of solo travel is doing what you want to do when you want to do it without a care in the world. Mm-hmm. And you would agree? I would agree. Yeah. Yeah. I think the um, downside of traveling by yourself is kind of the loneliness at the point. I I would agree. It's not a consistent loneliness, though. So there will just be some times when you think oh, this was funny. It would have been really funny with so-and-so. So it's not always the same person. Right. You'll think, oh my goodness, Misty would have loved that. Right. And so you try and like take a picture and send it to her. So it's kind of like the Drake song, like you people dream of going on vacation just to take pictures and show it to who's back home. Right, right. And sometimes you find yourself doing that. You're just, on occasion, you'll be in the moment. You're really enjoying everything you're doing. And then you take a step back and suddenly you're outside of the moment. Right. And you're literally just trying to record it for people who can't be there. But, you know, like the crazy thing is, is that with the way that cell phone plans are going, mm-hmm. T-Mobile has an amazing international plan. So good. Right. That has been, like, that's been make as far as like make or break for my last couple of trips. Right. Not even my last couple. I've been with T-Mobile for like five years right. and they do an international data plan for free. Right. It's like 2G. I will tell you. Unless <laughs> even even yeah. when you pay $5 more a month, um, it still is not LTE speed. It's 3G no. at that point. <laughs> and they, they don't give you that much of it because I bought it the first day we were in Barcelona and I was like, okay, I'm just going to pay right. this extra money, get my faster internet. It was still moving slow. And then suddenly like two hours in, they're like, hey, you've used up all your fast data. I was like, what the what? And you have to pay $5 a day to continue to get the upgrade. And I'm like, yeah. wait, but I thought I paid $5 additional for T-Mobile get One it. Plus to mm-hmm. get the fast we were we were i think i spent an additional like on that trip mm-hmm. which is not a solo trip so it's a deviation from the topic but oh what was it, like five dollars every day just because mm-hmm. you couldn't get on instagram you couldn't download anything oh we were trying to do cabify remember oh my oh cabify, cabify was such a mess there yeah i that was the worst Fail. app i've ever seen because Fail. even once you try and start loading stuff exactly it just kept on failing on you so you I couldn't get a cab mean. off Cabify, the whole purpose of the app. Yeah. Trash. So Trash. in general, though, T-Mobile is good for the free unlimited data. If nothing else, you're able to, like, post pictures. It has, like, in Zurich, it was awesome for me getting around location-wise. But you know, T-Mobile was a, um, a Netherlands brand, though. Is it? Yeah. Oh, I didn't even realize that. So, like, in Amsterdam, mm-hmm. they, they started there. So, T-Mobile is, is oh. actually a European brand, I think. That makes sense why I was doing so good on, like, their Google right. Maps. Because the first day I got there. So, like, that was a trip that we did together. But I got there a day early. Right. And I had been on, like, the plane ride from hell, which was funny because it was confirmed. I had... Oh, you flew confirmed? Yeah. Iceland Air had an amazing deal. They're like, oh, it's just, like, it was... <laughs> Two, but that's a budget airline. I know. It was like 250 or $300 round trip from New York. So I only had to non-rev yeah. to New York. And I'm like, oh, this is amazing. I'm going to be confirmed. And I had it in my mind that all like international flights, they give you a meal and like beverages. They don't. Oh, that's right. Because you did. So this is the point of saying mm-hmm. on solo travel, mm-hmm. you're never actually alone because there's so much, so yes. much connectivity, right? And that is almost stressful too, though, because... You want to unplug. You want to step back and say, I'm putting my phone down. I'm here. I'm living in the moment. But then with phones, like, so I used to carry like my digital SLR camera and that's what I took pictures with, but it takes up so much space in my backpack that I thought, no, I'm just taking pictures on my phone. Right. And it's cumbersome. It's big. It's like, it's just there. And you want the amazing Mm -hmm. photos. Like you You do the amazing photos, but you want to feel like you're. You're agile. You want to feel flexible when you're moving places. And you don't want to be robbed. The thing about having your phone in your hand taking pictures is that where do you draw the line between I'm I'm using this to like snap photos and I'm going to use this to like post photos and talk to people. Because now I can text with like a bunch of people and I've done that on trips where I'm like back and forth texting all day and I'm like, what are you 
doing? Because you're telling them about your experience. You're like, mm-hmm. well, I'm out here doing this and this and this. Yes. And they have questions. And it's like you're in the moment in another country explaining mm-hmm. to somebody else what you're actually doing. But then are you doing it still? Kind of. Which is a really good point. So if you've never traveled solo, mm-hmm. and this is for all the flirts out there, if you guys have never gone on a trip by yourself because you're scared about being alone, as long as you have an international data plan, you are not alone. You're not alone. You, you have your mom, your sisters, you have everybody. Mm-hmm. And as long as you're making smart decisions, as, specifically as a black female. Mm-hmm. Now, that brings up a whole different thing. So when I'm traveling... I, that's the one thing I tell everyone. I was like, bad things are usually not going to happen to you if you're traveling smart. If I'm like right. out here at midnight getting drunk and not watching myself, mm-hmm. probably not going to go my way. <laughs> but when I'm traveling by myself, I am not a nighttime person. Like, well, I'm not a nighttime person, even at home, 8.30 PM rolls around. I'm like, do you see the time? That's because you're up at like four o'clock. I know. The roosters, you. But that just sun, hits me even when I'm traveling. There. So I'll, I'll have busy days. Like that first day in Amsterdam, I was running around like crazy. I thought, I want to go see the botanical gardens. I got to go to to the Ricks Museum. And I'm doing public transportation. I'm figuring all this out. I went to uh, the Rembrandt house. I went somewhere else. But I did all this in right, like right. from morning time to 3 p.m. when Misty, when you were getting there, and I was like, well, I gotta get everything done. Because you had been to Amsterdam before, mm-hmm. so I thought, I'm not gonna make you do everything again. I'm gonna try and get some stuff in mm-hmm. myself. But I did all of that in such a short period of time. I probably could have used a nap after all that. But generally, it just feels like you're trying to do everything, and you do have it on your phone, you've got your public transportation. It's awesome in that respect, but mm-hmm. you can also run yourself ragged traveling solo. Well, yeah, because you're doing so much. I um, So the only solo trip I will ever reference is Bali mm-hmm. because I've always gone with somebody or groups. Mm-hmm. Um, typically, I travel with you yeah. or the person I'm dating at the time. Those are – or my friends, you know what I'm saying? So um, when I went to Bali, mm-hmm. I decided to do um, – the only thing that exhausted me during that trip was a sunrise hike trek, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Um, nobody really explained to me what that was. I thought it was just a trail, and we just walk a little bit. It seems super in the title, Sunrise Trek. I've never thought of a trek as being easy. That sounds like a challenge. I did. I showed up in Tom's. I thought it, <laughs> I thought it was just a, a gentle walk. <laughs> I thought we were just moving along a path, and we were just going to, you know, mm. watch the sunrise on the top of a mountain that wasn't really that, like, steep. So it was, um... Oh, it was a steep mountain? Yeah, I was, I was literally hiking in Tom's. I was hiking oh. in Tom's. So they should call it a hike, not a trek. They should call it a hike. Are they just I, synonyms, though? Literally, I felt like I was free rock climbing. <laughs> I was, like, hand on rock. And I wish I had, like, a little belt that I clipped on the cable line. But you got the picture, though, right? I mean, it was beautiful. Like, you got that uh, iconic, the two things on either side of you, and you're standing in the middle picture? I gotta do it again. You've not picture? seen that 50 million times on Instagram? No, I saw my picture. I have not seen it on Instagram. Okay. Solo travel is amazing because you can connect with the culture, right? You true, can connect true. where you're at in the ways that are natural to you. Mm-hmm. If you're a bar person and you don't mind going to a bar by yourself, you're gonna connect with some people. And if you're not as um if you're not fearful of mm-hmm. strangers, then you're going to talk to those people. That brings up a whole different thing of eating by yourself. Eating by your so some people are not comfortable with being in a restaurant and just having a meal. And I was like, just eat. Get on your phone if you need to. Bring right, because they feel awkward. Mm-hmm. So there are uh, two tips for that. I will say if you've never eaten by yourself and you are going to eat by yourself, the best way to do it is to go to a bar. You know what? I don't like going to bars. I want to sit at a table, but maybe there's something that's really comforting about the awkwardness of it. Um, I'm just going to sit at this table. I walk in. They're like, oh, just, uh, just one? is anyone with you? I was like, no, just table for one. And they're like, do you want to sit at the bar? I was like, no, I want a table. Like a real person. Right. But <laughs> certain people feel that. Yeah. So Because if you go to a bar and you're sitting by yourself, one, you can, you can interact with the bartender and you can converse with whoever sits near you. That's true, but I think you should treat it like a date. 
you're taking yourself on a date. So I, I want to sit at a table. Yes. I want my place settings. I want my glass of wine. I want to feel like I'm wine and dining myself. And that is that is the benefit of solo travel because mm-hmm. you are valuing you mm-hmm. over somebody else. And I know it sounds oh. very cliche, but like solo travel is really connecting with yourself as well as a country mm-hmm. in the ways that you value. And when you eat alone drink alone, walk alone. You have a lot of personal time to just think of. Mm -hmm. It's the ultimate self-care. It's like some people say, oh, you're going to go to uh, get a massage. Mm -hmm. Like that's Mm -hmm. self-care. No, taking yourself on a trip is a whole different level because you're just there really just, I don't know, being unbelievably introspective of what you're doing and how you are feeling because right. that's all you're having to check with. You're not checking with, is this person happy and are you happy? It's, am I happy? Am right. I having fun? Right, right. And there is nothing quite as relaxing about only having to worry, think about, and make yourself happy. When you come back from a trip by yourself, mm-hmm. you are going to feel relaxed. I'm trying to think of some trips that I didn't because I'm certain – I mean, obviously, I came back from Cambodia. Well, you know what? The most, the mm-hmm. other most important part is as a black woman traveling mm-hmm. solo, mm-hmm. what you get from it, I believe, is that you feel um, independent. It mm-hmm. secures your independence. So we'll just totally. say, we'll just say as a woman, right? Because I will say that um, I didn't travel solo, but it's a work trip. Mm-hmm. And I had to go to, um, I work in the Middle East, so I had to go to Iraq. And when I was up there, Mm -hmm. I had to figure out how to get around the country by myself for entry into the country. I had visa issues. I'm not going to go into it. But when I got there, the place I went didn't allow me to come in on the visa I had. So I had to go to another place. So I had Mm -hmm. to figure out my transportation Mm -hmm. without anybody assisting me. And in those moments, you either will fold and be like, oh, my God, I can't do it. Or you fucking figure it out. Like, you have no option. You have to figure it out. How strong did you feel after that? During it, I was like, what is this? I was nervous. I was Mm -hmm. scared. You know, I'm like, then you're just like caught up in the moment and the Mm -hmm. momentum of trying to figure it out. But afterwards, I was like, oh, I did that shit. Right. No, you walk away with such a sense of confidence. Right. Right. And it just, it really helps you when you come back to the world. Mm -hmm. Like, bro, I was in a war zone and I was able to figure out how to get around the country three, Mm -hmm. four bases by myself. Yeah. Oh, no. You feel like you can take anything on. There's nothing that can bother you after you've been on your own, figured everything out, and come out the other side and be like, I had fun. And that's the most important takeaway. Mm -hmm. The strength that you derive from figuring out situations, not being bogged down with other people, Mm -hmm. and just really going through it. Like, Yeah. So you should never be fearful. So two tips Mm -hmm. of pre-planning a solo trip. What do you think? Um, stay in a hotel where you are going to feel comfortable or just stay in a place where you're going to feel comfortable. So if someone's a social person, not me, Mm -hmm. then stay in a hostel because like those lobbies are really interesting. I think people, they're like, oh yeah, I just love staying in hostels because I just want to talk to people and like Mm -hmm. meet others. And I was like, well, that's not my jam, but I'm happy that you got that experience. Right. I guess. And hostels in today's day, 2019, are multi-leveled you have your really basic five dollars i stayed in a 15 man room Mm -hmm. hostel and then you can get a private room private bathroom 45 to 60 euro a night which in certain cities is way cheaper than a hotel right no it's totally cheaper so then the other thing is that i would just say is really treat it like you're you're doing a treat for yourself. Yeah. Because if you go there, you could feel very lonely. You're like, I'm, I'm just on my own. I'm not doing anything. Mm-hmm. However, if you take it into consideration of like, I'm I'm taking myself on a, an extended date, mm-hmm. then you're going to treat yourself as you would want someone to treat you on a date. And you're going to pamper yourself. You're going to mm-hmm. really prioritize yourself. And, and you're going to plan the activities that mm-hmm. you want. Yes. So pre-planning the activities is important. To me, Yes. I want to know what I'm doing when I get there because I've had some vacations where I've been on my own and I just figured it out. So like Rome, I got there and I got a map that had like some of the major things I just put on the bed and I started circling like what I wanted to do and what I wanted to see. And I mean, I did that in a night where I was able to plan out what I wanted, but I've also had other vacations where beforehand I really thought of everything I wanted to do and kind of carefully put it together. Mm -hmm. And when I got there, I loved it. I just felt like, 
I felt like I knew exactly where I was going and what I was doing, and that was really comfortable. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of where I've done that. Probably, actually, Vietnam was really good about that. One of my favorite Vietnamese experiences is that they have this mud park called, like, the Egg and I or something, and you literally get into a giant egg-shaped... Uh, bath Mm -hmm. and then they just fill it up with mud and you sit there and you're looking out over the mountain (laughs) landscape i know it sounds super nerdy and the funny thing is i had forgotten i even went there so i did so much stuff while i was in vietnam and i'm like and then i saw the pamphlet because i had saved a bunch of pamphlets i've recently thrown them all out because i was trying to like clean up but i was like oh yeah i remember when i was sitting in an egg on the side of a mountain in japan just laying out in mud and that's an experience Mm -hmm. And that's something that I can remember for myself because if I had been traveling with others, I might have felt nerdy being like, hey, you want to go hang out in this egg Mm -hmm. place? Because they also, they served a bunch of egg-based dishes. That's really where they got that theme from. Uh, And I'm like, this is such a weird thing that has nothing to do with Vietnamese culture, but I want to do it, so I'm going to do it. That's a niche. I don't know where else you could do that. So just make sure that you do things that you Mm -hmm. like to do. If you're a picture taker, go take a bunch of pictures. Mm -hmm. Uh, the other thing of that we will touch on, mm-hmm. solo travel, people are like, well, how am I going to get pictures of myself? Struggle city. But in the new era, Airbnb and it's all of these, all these platforms, you just pay for a photographer, mm-hmm. two hour session, follow you and you get amazing pictures. So I tried to do that in Switzerland. I was too late to get that properly. But I wanted someone to just walk around and get full body shots. Because every picture is like right here. Right. Which is great until you realize I'm wearing the same scarf and everything. But that is one of those pre-planning things. So Mm -hmm. when you're on a solo trip, plan that. Plan for that. It it helps. But yeah. So I I think that you enjoy solo travel more. Right? It depends on who I'm traveling with. Like I've... So I put it like this. Traveling with you is as fun as traveling solo. Because I'm a fun person. I mean, I'm going to stop telling you nice I just stuff. Wanna, I just want to, I'm confirming what I can't, you're saying. I can't say anything nice it's to you anymore. It. I'm just, I'm validating. Yeah, you know what, you're right. I, I prefer traveling solo more. She already said traveling with me was like traveling with herself. You guys Yeah, I think I was lying. I already validated your opinion. You can't take it back. To the camera. Where you like this? That's where you like <laughs> <laughs> All right, well... Um, thank you for sharing your solo travel experiences. Um, thank you, Misty. You're welcome. And uh, that's all we have on today's episode. I hope you guys enjoy. Bye.